Right, so welcome everyone to today's live. Uh, we're going to talk to you about the tawny owls that are on eggs at Luna and Bomber. And this is really exciting. We're in the depths of winter here and we've got snow on the ground still. Do you want to give them another glance? Well, it's uh, yeah, just another snow sort of storm coming in there. We're losing, losing the landscape, a valley at a time as this next uh, layer of snow comes towards us. And uh, yeah, so it's been quite quite something in the last few days. We've had a lot of wind, so that means we get drifting, uh, which means getting around gets a little bit more interesting. I've been up in Ashwood doing as uh, best I can to fit cameras. We fitted a, a new camera this morning, we drove back here, and by the time we drove back here, we had a, a buzzard on the camera, which was really exciting, because every time you put a new camera in, you always worry, uh, can they see their reflection in the lens? Uh, but we've actually had two buzzards feed in there in the last few hours, so that camera's literally just gone in. I've sprayed it uh, with some spray paint to take away the colour of the camera, uh, but that lens is always revealed. So to come back here and see a buzzard straight away uh, is absolutely fabulous. We're going to attempt the nest as soon as we can, as soon as it's safe. Uh, it's not safe at the moment, so we're going up 14 metres, 15 metres uh, to the nest. Uh, and in these conditions, it's just not going to be possible to do that. Uh, so we just need to wait for a good spell of weather. I'm hoping for the weekend. I don't mind cold. Uh, I just don't want wind when I'm up at that height. So, uh, yes, we're going to talk to you today about Luna and Bomber. And this is, uh, you know, real, really exciting stuff that's happening at the moment. We, you know, our nesting season has been stretched. Uh, we've worked it out. If we end up with a season like, like last year, and we've obviously got uh, eggs being laid in, in January, we will end up with a 10 month breeding season here with the owls, uh, if the barn owls second brood again. So this is really, really quite something, you know, normally the breeding season's quite tight uh, in the summer, so we're hopefully going to bring you some incredible stuff, hopefully for a 10 month period of nesting birds with the owls, the kestrels, Bad owls, tawny owls, hopefully little owls, maybe buzzards. Uh, so we're going to bring you loads of stuff this year. Well, let's have a look at Luna, one of our first clips of Luna. This is her with her two eggs, just a short reveal of the eggs here. Uh, Bomber's in there as well at the moment uh, on this clip. And uh, yeah, it's very special just to get these short little reveals of these eggs. Uh, tawny owls are very guarded over those eggs and keep very sort of hunkered down and especially in this weather we've had temperatures uh, you know well well below freezing uh, minus four uh, and temperatures down to that sort of uh, sort of temperature so really quite chilly conditions so she must keep those eggs carefully guarded um, so that's just showing a little glimpse of the eggs what we're going to watch next we've got a bit of information about those eggs <clears> haven't we um, but let's let's show the feathers shall we yeah, so those eggs were laid on the, t uh, the first egg was laid on the 25th and she's going to incubate those for about, about a month uh, and we can give or take a few days. Uh, it's never bang on that, that date that we're hoping for. Uh, she's just going to incubate those uh, for just around about a month, sometimes it's just over. But this is fascinating stuff that we've got here. She creates a brood patch on her belly like a lot of birds and I've never seen this before where she actually eats the feathers. She's pulling these feathers out here. Um, so there, a little feather going down. So she's actually eating the feathers. And this is something we've never managed to capture before. We've seen them preening a lot, messing around with their food patch, but there you see it, bare skin. Um, so that's where the eggs go against. There's no point of her sat on top of there. Those feathers have got a very good layer of insulation on them. So she won't be transferring her heat to those eggs properly if she remained fully feathered. So just, you know, on her tummy here, she creates this area. And this is like a hormonal change within the owls. These feathers um, start to sort of readily come away and they probably cause a little bit of ir irritation there. And, and then she, she's actually pulling them, pulling them out. But this is probably just dislodging them rather than she's not plucking herself necessarily. It's a hormonal change that sheds these feathers in the brood patch. Um, so that's really quite something to see, something we've never seen properly here before over many uh, owl nests that we've filmed over the years. So that's really good. And what really helps is when we get, um, uh, you know, people passing on the sightings that they've seen through the moderators. Um, 
So these little moments like that, there was a little argument going on whether it was a vole or a feather, and it's definitely a feather that she's eating there on the brood patch. So all the people watching the channel are really helping us guys here, uh, trying to find those little magical moments because we're we're going into having nearly uh, over 100 cameras this spring season probably, and that's a lot of data for our guys downstairs to go through. So every little bit of information, those special sightings that you see are really important to us here. So what are we going to have a look at next? Let's watch um, where Luna's been leaving the nest. Yeah, yeah, so Luna, um, you know, again with everyone watching, it's really, she's leaving quite abruptly there, that's interesting. She's obviously heard something. Um, this is her come into the feeding post. Sometimes the male will provision the foods, but because we have a, a, a buffer here for the owls uh, laid out most evenings that uh, she's just coming out for an average of about 11 minutes at a time and that's uh, only three times a day so she's only leaving that nest three times well I say a day three times a night uh, that she's leaving that nest uh, site to uh, stretch her wings have a feed and uh, the usual visit of nature that she needs to do uh, whereas we watch the barn owls often, often uh, um, yes, this is that barn owl nest from last year, this is Gilfie the female. And we always get a much better view of the eggs and stuff, the long, longer legged owl and the, you know, they, they, they spend a lot more time stretching, walking around and doing the necessary. Tawny owls, I've never seen them doing that in the nest, uh, they're much cleaner. But barn owls quite often will live in, live in a larger nest site. They will go into small nest sites. Uh, but this is a really large nest site. But barn owls are not as house proud as the tawny owls, should we say. But they do a lot of stretching uh, throughout the day, a, a lot of uh, movement throughout the day, whereas the tawny owls keep their eggs very guarded underneath them. You get little glimpses as they pop up uh, and then they back down on that egg. Uh, they're just turning them and doing the necessary care to that egg rather than giving us a lovely view of them <laughs> and uh, having a good stretch and a wander around. Uh, so that's been absolutely great to see her. I think everyone's concerned about this weather and, and those eggs. I, I'm, I've got not many worries. Uh, she's very well guarded on those eggs and she's not leaving them for long. Uh, the first night she laid an egg it did drop to uh, well below freezing. That was the only night I was thinking, you know, I was getting a little bit worried but as soon as, just before the second egg, leg was laid she was sort of sat down incubating quite well that egg. So. Uh, yeah, so it's all tremendously exciting stuff and uh, yeah, incredibly snowy out here today. Uh, so what we're going to have a look at next, what's our next look? We've bit? got a couple uh, of the pair of them feeding together actually. Oh yeah, this is quite cool. So this is, she's actually got two eggs at this stage and uh, she's, uh, is this one Bomber I think? That's Bomber and then yeah, Luna comes and then in. And Luna yeah. comes in and there is a difference in between these two owls, uh, which we can sort of explain on further ones. Bomber's bombing off, and then we get um, this little guy coming into the scene. This is one of Bandita's kits, a male stoat. He's quite large, this one. He's a, and he thinks, he's used to pushing the barn owls off there, uh, but the tawny owls, there's something else. And the tawny owl takes a little moment there and actually uh, gives him a little spang on the bum, uh, as if don't even think about taking me on. And these little interactions happen quite a lot and to capture them on camera is, is really quite special. Um, there, there was no, you know, not, neither of those are going to get badly injured, injured in that instance. It was just like a little warning tap. The stoke went to challenge the owl on the um, post there on the branch and then the tawny owl saw a little moment where it can just put that stoke back in the, its place. It's like you can try this with barn owls but not a tawny owl. <laughs> so, uh, Yes, yeah, so that was quite a great little moment. Um, We've got one final clip. Yep, let's, let's have it. Yes, yeah, so we've got a, a barn owl here uh, thinking it's going to have a little look in that nest site to see what's going on and Luna straight out defending that nest. And this is something we've seen before the, um, before the actual eggs were laid and the birth tawny owls chased, um, chased the barn owls away. Uh, and they will defend that nest literally uh, against anything that goes near there, whether it's squirrels, jackdaws. Um, there's no, there's no, nothing will go in there and, and take on the tawny owls in nature. Um, so really exciting. 
to have this great start uh, to the year that we've actually got eggs. We're going to then have chicks. What's we're going to have chicks at the end of this month, aren't we? Gosh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, so the chicks are going to hatch towards the end of this month, and then they'll be in the nest then for about around about five weeks, six weeks if we're lucky, uh, and then they'll be out. Uh, so then we're looking. Um, March, April, yes, there's going to be no leaves on these trees at all down here by that point. So these uh, little fluffy chicks are then going to hop out of this nest and fledge. Uh, and they're not going to be like fully feathered, they're going to be very downy. And obviously in the spring we'll get some, you know, April showers which can be quite harsh and things. Um, and even towards the end of March they might even just be coming out then. So. so these little chicks, uh, the story is far from over but we'll take you through hopefully every stage and what happens to them. Um, they are going to get wet when they come out <laughs> and I might need to go down and look after them and get them dried off and things but uh, we'll sort of bring you every uh, a moment of this nest that's going to come in the next few months. So questions? Um, so Pam from Dorset asks, is Luna hunting for herself or does Bomber bring food for her? So in the past we've seen the, uh, the male tawny owl often sort of provision the uh, food uh, into the nest, uh, but she doesn't always eat inside the nest, she'll eat outside of the nest. So we can't say 100% what's going on, uh, so sometimes Bomber might be uh, feeding, um, uh, taking food down for Luna, but I think mainly Luna's coming up and just feeding off the branches because we've put food out. So it's not a totally natural situation that I provide some supplementary food because we have so many owls. Um, a lot of these owls that we see on camera have been uh, rehab owls that we've had here and uh, we've then continued looking after them as they've reached adulthood. Uh, but they have gone out into different, they're flying from around the countryside, which is always nice to see on an evening. They come, you know, they, they can come quite, quite a distance. They can come several fields away um, to where they're actually living. So, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of owls out here in an evening and uh, there's uh, food provided for them just as supplementary things. Weather like this, the level numbers are really low at the moment, uh, which is crucial for the barn owls. And then we get weather like this, and I don't really want to lose any of those owls. We've got them through their rehab stage and got them back into the wild. And, uh, yeah, we need to keep looking after them. Shirley Malloy asks, is she likely to lay more eggs? No, no, no. No more eggs, so uh, tawny owls are very uh, rigid in their breeding cycle that they'll lay eggs usually um, every two to three two to three days they'll lay an egg. Uh, so her laying is, is finished now, she's incubating. She has laid four eggs last year, mm -hmm. maybe, and that was in February she laid, towards the end of February. Um, and now she's laid just two eggs, so uh, maybe because she's laid earlier, we're not quite sure. Maria Ballhatcher on Facebook asks, is it a bit early if they hatch? It's a bit early, <laughs> but it is what it is. You know, we've just got to, uh, um, you know, tawny owls are a tough owl. It's not like a barn owl, which are, they're a little bit more susceptible to bad weather conditions. Tawny owls are, are toughies and they, they will be okay. Uh, just when the chicks fledge, when they're in the nest, there isn't really a problem because, uh, you know, Luna's there with them, um, brooding them uh, as, as eggs and then through to as chicks. Uh, but it's when they fledge, there won't be any leaves on the trees and we will get some weather up here, it's guaranteed that. So uh, but we'll keep an eye on them. One of our viewers from Indonesia asks, does every owl only lay two eggs? <laughs> no, 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 uh, they can lay, tawny owls can usually lay, uh, well, it, the average is 2.6 eggs, <laughs> so... Uh, that gives you an idea of how many they lay. So quite often I've seen clutches of two and three, uh, which then gets to your 2.6 as an average clutch. Um, very rarely I've seen four eggs. Uh, only, I can't remember, maybe it's the first time here I've seen four eggs, which, which is what we had last year. Um, a question from Snoopy Snoops on YouTube. Um, have you ever picked up chick calls from inside the eggs? Yes, yeah, yeah, we have, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the microphones in there are quite sensitive, sensitive so we can hear uh, chicks calling inside the eggs. And the owls definitely can hear them because their, um, you know, their attitude completely changes when they're um, hatching. And especially sometimes like 
because with ours it's just the female that incubates. Sometimes with the kestrels when they start hatching and you, there's little cheeps coming from the eggs, uh, the female won't give way to the male to take over incubating as readily. She'll like really, <laughs> you know, they, they change over regularly and it's all very orderly. And then when the chicks start hatching, the kestrel will be like, no, I'm not moving the female. This is too important a job. Uh, so uh, yeah, so we, we do hear, hear that and the owls definitely hear it. So we, we see the owls actually looking down with a facial disc at the egg in an inquisitive manner so we know they're hearing it and if you listen really carefully you can hear a little cheeping. Pam Co on YouTube asks um, how long do the adult tawnies care for their young until they are encouraged to move away? A long time is a simple answer if you had a parent as a tawny out um, that would be your best choice as an owl so they'll look after these chicks until until July um, which is quite extraordinary that they take care of them right the way through the summer, sometimes into August if the uh, chicks are a bit later. Usually we've got tawny owls laying in mid-March here um, and then they're looking after them through until August, sometimes even until September, um, so a long time, many months. So Miss M, one of our YouTube moderators, asks, uh, is the temperature inside the nest warmer than we would think? <laughs> It is underneath, believe me, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the temperature, it is what it is. You know, at the moment, it's about minus one out there. Um, maybe minus two at night, we're down maybe to minus four at the moment. Um, uh, but it is what it is, you know, Luna, she's on those eggs, and if she's sat on those eggs, those eggs are going to be absolutely fine. So we have one of the children from Keldmarsh Primary School is asking what size the baby owls will be when they hatch. Oh, they're going to be gorgeous. If you can imagine they're coming out of a small hen egg, not a bantam egg, like a small hen egg. So those chicks, when they come out, oh, what are they going to be? <laughs> Just fit in the palm of your hand nicely. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, they're going to be small. They're going to be, you know, about this sort of size and very fluffy, eyes closed and super sweet. I think that, I'm just going to check if we've got any more questions. Um, I think that's everything really. Um, so I think we'll probably take more next time. Yeah, yeah, so uh, yeah, take care everyone and we'll uh, take some more questions on Thursday and bring you another live event on Thursday. Uh, but take care wherever you